もうマジ無理アコと別れた超大好きだったのに Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most soul crushing moments where an anime character got their hearts stomped into pieces. Number 20, a schoolyard crushing. A whisker away. Young love is easy to build and even easier to break. For what it's worth, Mio was willing to go all the way. She wrote a heartfelt love letter and everything. Unfortunately, some schoolyard jerks got it before it reached her crush, Hinode. <laughs> they recited the cheesy declaration to the whole class, and while Mio refuses to apologize for her feelings, Hinode can't take the scrutiny. He doesn't just publicly reject Mio, he flat out says he hates her. <laughs> Even if it is just a safe face, it's hard to get past the fact that he sent his would be girlfriend running out the door in tears. <laughs> Number 19 Shot Through the Heart, Amagami SS. The sun is setting, the park is empty, and Junichi is standing in front of a beautiful girl. The scene is romantic enough to single handedly make him believe in love again. Not wasting the opportunity, Junichi squares up and tells Haruka how he really feels. And he promptly gets rejected in the most matter of fact way possible. While Haruka does commend his bravery, she still gives him a cold hard no. The reason? She prefers men who are older and more mature. They say it's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. But after this, Junichi may beg to differ. Number 18 All's Fair in Love, War, and Witchcraft. Maruka Magica. It's no hyperbole to say Sayaka gave her heart and soul to this relationship. She signed away her spirit just so Kyosuke could play violin. And what did she get in return? A front row seat to him cozying up with another girl. That's what. The revelation hits deep because Kyosuke never outright rejected her. Even in the end, Sayaka didn't have the courage to confess her feelings. Instead, she channeled those negative emotions into a more violent outlet, transforming into a witch. The only thing worse than seeing Sayaka succumb to her heartbreak is knowing that, with a bit more open communication, things could have turned out differently. Number 17, I love you like a brother. A sister's all you need. There's no coming back from the I see you as a brother line, and Itsuki knows it. Even though Ayane is trying to let him down easy, he throws her words in the trash, alongside any hope of them rekindling their friendship. Time can't heal this wound. If anything, it only makes it worse. Ayane's turn of phrase is a major reason Itsuki spends his adult life with a severe little sister complex. Yes, it's as unhealthy as it sounds. This failed confession is even more depressing with the foreknowledge that Itsuki will never come to peace with the sting of rejection. Number 16, Jun's love song, the anthem of the hearts. Jun Naruse has a crippling fear of speaking out loud. She could still sing though, and luckily, she has the pensive musician Takumi to help her turn her lyrics into words. But when she finally manages to say, I love you, it's Takumi who can't say it back. Instead, he responds with a heart wrenching thanks and then admits that he loves someone else. Jun already knew that though. Still, she owed it to herself to say her piece, no matter the odds. Both Jun and Takumi knew how this was gonna end before either of them said a word. 
But that doesn't make the reality any less painful. Number 15. Confession Under the Stars Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun It took the whole season, but in the final episode, Sakura finally tells Nozaki what we've all known from the beginning. She loves him. Then for a blissful, tantalizing second, it really seems like Nozaki feels the same. After all, watching fireworks together feels like as good a time as any for their first kiss, right? But when Nozaki smiles and leans in, he says two short sentences that will take your heart and squeeze it until it bursts. And that's how the show ends. No clarification and no happily ever after. The credits just roll, leaving Sakura and everyone else reeling from the cool emotional whiplash. Number 14. Online Dating And you thought there is never a girl online? If you love in the game, you love in real life. Or so Hideki thinks. Sadly, when he tries to make his and Akko's romance work IRL, he hits a stone wall courtesy of Akko herself. When he blurts out his love for her, she turns him down without even taking a beat to consider it. Oh, and she does it all with a smile too, just to really rub salt in the wound. Ako wasn't trying to be mean, but either way, it's gonna take Hideki quite a while to nurse his ego back. Hey, at least they're still married in the game. <laughs> Number 13, Star-Crossed Lovers, Boarding School Juliet. The show may be inspired by Shakespeare's famous romance, but trust us, Inuzuka is no Romeo, and Hasuki is certainly not Juliet either. Rather, their journey is full of misunderstandings, fights, and oh yeah, Inuzuka nearly drowning. And yet, it's all for naught. He's already happily spoken for. Hasuki takes it about as well as you could expect. That is, becoming a sobbing mess and yelling about how much she hates him. They both know she's lying and somehow that makes her tears even harder to resist. <laughs> Inazuka assures her that they'll still be friends, but after everything Hasuki went through, that feels like a hollow consolation prize. Number 12. Heartstopper. Orange. After receiving letters from the future, Naho learns that her relationship with the sullen Kakaru is literally a matter of life and death. But in the end, not even the power of foresight can keep him from pulling away from her. <laughs> While Kakeru says everything is fine, he isolates himself with the smallest of gestures. He doesn't walk Naho home and then refuses to borrow a pencil, and then begins to ignore her altogether. Kakeru's growing coldness is like watching a car crash in slow motion, not just because Naho is losing a friend, but because this breakup of sorts may very well be Kakeru's death sentence. <laughs> Number 11, 100% Heartbreak, Mob Psycho 100. Shigeo Kageyama, better known as Mob, has felled evil cultists, overpowered espers, and the manifestation of his own insecurities. But there's one thing he can't defeat, the whims of a teenage girl. It took three whole seasons of meticulous character development for Mob to finally ask his crush, Tsubomi, on a date. Then, in an off-screen scene, she says no. As you can imagine, grief-stricken Subfest isn't the ending most people had in mind for Mob Psycho 100. While the show always prioritized Mob's personal growth over his dating life, it still would have been nice to see him get the girl. It certainly would have caused less tears. Number 10, second place, the sister, Eromanga Sensei. 
What is it with these kinds of anime? Why do they always have to do this to the best girl? As a fan of Masamune's writing and apparently his absent personality as well, fellow light novelist Muramasa confesses to him outright that she loves practically everything about him, only for Masamune to state how he's already into someone else. Thankfully, he spared her the fact she had lost out to his adopted sister. Number 9. Cat Fight Pokemon <laughs> It's hard being a talking Pokemon, apparently. In something of a homage to classics like Casablanca, the mascot of Team Rocket recounts how he once fell in love with a female Meowth called Meowzy, one who was under the control of a wild Persian. Skip to present day, and Meow finds himself battling said Persian in order to free the cat of his dreams. Surprise, surprise, he actually manages to win, but Meowzy still rejects him in the end because she finds talking Pokemon to be freaks. What makes it worse is he learned to do that just to impress her. Huh? What'd she say? She never wanna be with me cause I'm still just a walking talking freak me out! Number 8. The Loneliest Tuba Player Sound Euphonium Man, who knew that high school music clubs could be so cutthroat? <laughs> Finally getting the dreamy first year all to herself, Hazuki confesses her feelings of love, only to be met with a pretty pathetic reaction from Shuichi. Despite having every reason to be upset, Hazuki instead immediately decides to help him romance the childhood friend he not so secretly likes. Because that's what friends do. We hope you're happy with yourself, Shuichi. After all, tuba players need love too. Number 7. Ninja Rejection Knockout Naruto Why, Sasuke? Why won't you ever tell me anything? We will be the first to admit that Sakura's crush on the last Uchiha wasn't exactly the most endearing character trait, but it's still pretty hard to look at this scene and just disregard the raw emotion. In a final desperate plea to stop Sasuke from hopping over to Orochimaru's side, Sakura confesses her feelings to him then and there. Sasuke, I'm so in love with you, I can't even stand it! Alas, her words don't have the intended effect, leading him to knock her out to prevent her from following further. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Sorry, Sakura. Guess revenge is just a tad more appealing than teenage romance. Number 6. Second place to sister, again! Aremo. From the same mind that insists sisters are the only way forward, we have this little number, a story about a guy who is utterly convinced his sister is a top-tier waifu. Alas, as a result, Kyosuke ends up losing out on the chance to date the most adorable gothic lolita to ever grace animation. She was quirky, sweet, and wholeheartedly invested in our lead's happiness, and yet he just couldn't bring himself to abandon Kirino. <laughs> If that wasn't bad enough, the breaker pretty much swears her off love forever. Great going, Kyosuke. Number 5. And they call it Kitty Love, Monogatari series. There's no denying that Araragi has no shortage of lovely ladies in his life, some of which he really shouldn't be within arm's reach of. But that's a whole other story. 
As it happens, his classmate Hanakawa ends up getting her heart broken while also having to deal with an oddity that turns her into one deadly kitty. After a bloody skirmish and heartfelt confession, Tsubasa is able to return to her original self, but still has to endure the after-effects of her friend rejecting her outright. We know Hitagi is best girl, but still, this is hard to watch. Number 4, now boarding flight to Heartbreak City. White Album 2. Setsuna. Walking out on the bubbly heroine in order to get with the quietly aggressive waifu, that takes some stones. When it comes to the final hurdle, musical genius Haruki can't help but go after the beautifully lazy Kazusa. Seems like a simple setup, right? There's just one problem. Accompanying him is his bestie and original love interest, Setsuna, who still very much has the haunts for him. What does he do? Make sure she has a front row seat while he locks lips with her romantic rival. Come on, man, at least have a little tact. <laughs> Number three, Bear Curry. Lovely complex. <laughs> Despite originally harboring a hilarious form of animosity to one another, given their sensitivities about their sizes, Atsushi and Risa eventually find themselves slowly starting to fall for one another, with Risa being the one to make the first move. Unsure of his true feelings, Atsushi ends up rejecting her. While brushing it off as nothing, Risa is eventually unable to hold back the tears and breaks down in front of her friends. If that wasn't bad enough, the only words she can bring herself to mutter is bear curry. It's so deliciously sad. <laughs> Number 2, Digi Destined to be Heartbroken, Digimon Adventure O2. All stand for the passing of what had once been a beloved ship. I mean, what the heck happened here? Sora, wait up! Oh, Ty! Uh -huh. The original series spent a good amount of time hinting that Ty and Sora had a deeper friendship than most. Ergo, we assumed that things would take a romantic direction when they grew up. However, it turns out that Sora has a thing for rock star bad boys. As it's revealed, she's into fellow Digi Destin, Matt. So, um, Sora, are you going to the concert with anybody? I mean, not that it matters to me, just wondering. No, I want to be available in case Matt is free afterwards. <laughs> Oh, I see. Kudos to the team's fearless leader for letting her go in such a mature manner, but damn, that must have stung. I'll be waiting. Thanks. You know what, Ty? What? You've really grown up! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Rem gets rejected. ReZero. I love you. Why would you say that? Look at that face. Look at that face. How do you manage to bring yourself to reject such a pure cinnamon roll? How? Okay, Rem may have killed you in one timeline, and Amelia is kind of cute, but come on. You don't know? Because you're my hero, Subaru. Through his various deaths and reincarnations, Subaru ended up earning the affection of this pint-sized Oni. They triumphed and suffered together across all manner of hardships. 
And just when Rem found the courage to confess her true feelings, Subaru decides to fall back on the half-elf. Rem. What is it? Emilia is the one I love. I know. Is it too late for another restart? What anime rejection are you still not over? Let us know in those comments below. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.